you get a mission, you don't get to say no. You know, people complain about it, but that doesn't really help anything. So it's just a matter of just, just doing what, what needs to be done. I can't control the situation, but I can control how I respond to the situation. So the humans still need to interact with each other. We're social animals, so we just have to figure out how to do it from a distance. As the world grinds to a halt in efforts to prevent the spread of the deadly coronavirus, my newspaper set out to discover how it's upending lives across the region. I wanted to find out how all of you were feeling and how you were coping. And I wanted to do it all without ever having to come into contact with you as a way to help prevent the spread of the virus. Here's what I came up with, the COVID Diaries. It's a series of interviews, all conducted over video chat, that take the temperature of a community in a time of dramatic upheaval. So I know last time we we talked, we talked a lot about uh, your wife, Lynn, who has early onset Alzheimer's and is in a memory care facility and had sort of talked about your your concerns about what might change in life around your your sort of visitation rights and everything at the facility. Um, do you want to update me and tell me a bit about what's going on in your life? Yeah, well, it uh, actually happened pretty quick. So it was the Friday after we talked last time was the last time I've seen her. So I remember telling you last time my concern was how she would respond after more than a couple of days. So for the first, I don't know, three or four days, she was doing fine. She was happy. She was energetic. She was interacting with everybody. The facility, was, uh, uh, one staff was sending me pictures of her, which was great. I'd say by maybe Friday of last week or maybe Thursday is when things started to not go so well. She um, asking for me, getting agitated. She didn't want to eat. Um, and she's pacing around a lot. Uh, so I tell her, I mean, it's not sure how people will look at this. People in, in the Alzheimer's circle understand, you know, telling, sometimes not telling the truth. So I think, you know, like we talked about last time being in her world. So I tell her that I'm at work and I'll be home a little bit later or I'm at school, uh, because I was going to graduate school for a while after she first got her diagnosis. So and that seems to make her feel okay. And then um, and then we talk the next day and the cycle repeats itself. But she's really sweet. She always tells me to ask me if I've eaten, tells me to be safe when I'm driving home because she's really concerned about me. And that's that's another concern because she when I was deployed in various hotspots around the world, she was she had some anxiety about my well-being. So really don't want to tell her that the reason I can't visit her is because some virus is making everybody sick. She, she doesn't need worry at this point. Yeah. I mean, last time you said the thing that really got me was when you said that your biggest worry was that you, because you couldn't explain COVID and all that to her, that she would just think that you didn't love her anymore. And that's why you weren't coming. Yeah. Still a concern. Day to day right now, she just thinks she's at her the the day program she used to go to or she's at home so but I, I don't know how much longer how much longer this is going to work um, I feel bad because I mean I'm really not trying to deceive her but I just try to put her at ease because she doesn't need to worry about anything wherever she is in that day wherever she thinks she is wherever she thinks I am I just have to meet her there but yeah still a concern that she's either you know going to think I'm running around on her or you know, there's, it's a, I don't know how strong a possibility is, but she just may not remember who I am anymore. So when, on the phone, she knows who I am, but, but she, when she sees me, will she still remember who I am? I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that day is coming or not. It happens sometimes, it happens, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen with people with Alzheimer's, but if that happens to her and it, it happens during this period, that's going to be one of another challenge. I, I'm, not overly concerned about but it's it's the possibility of that happening is not zero yeah we didn't really talk last time about um your military career so i didn't have any sense of um when and where you deployed but i wonder if you could tell me a bit about that and if there's any parallels to what's going on right now in life or or if there's any lessons learned that you're applying to what you're doing right now yeah that's a good question i've been talking to another uh somebody else in the military who mentioned that she thought that um, kind of the ability to, to try to get ahead of problems was helping her in this situation. And, and I think that's through trying to anticipate uh, things that are happening and try to have a plan. I think the closest situation to, to this, kind of the unknowns, is I was on a ship uh, that deployed for 
um, the Iraq war. So when we left, we didn't know when we were coming back and didn't know what was, you know, we left in January and it's like, okay, we'll see you when we get back. So somewhat in that mode of, okay, we're, you know, we're at the beginning of this. It's going to take, you know, X period of time. Don't know how long it's going to take. There's things I can do, you know, do for Lynn to try to make her um, as comfortable as possible. I could keep my, my mind and my body engaged and I feel sorry for myself and just, just do what I need to do. And I think that that's comes from military training too. You, you, you get a mission, you don't get to say no, you know, people complain about it, but that doesn't really help anything. So it's just a matter of just, just doing what, what needs to be done. Yeah. This is a hell of a mission. Have you given any thought to, I don't know how vivid of an imagination you have or how much it runs wild. Have you given any thought to like the next time that you see Lynn, what that will be like? Yeah, a little bit. And it's, I just, I just don't know. I mean, it, it could be, um, I think it likelihood is it, it will be like, I let no time is, as transpired in between. I'm not expecting it to be the, you know, running down the pier, hugging her kind of scenario like it was when I got back off of deployment. I just, I don't think and that may be the emotion that I'm feeling, but I have to meet her where she is. And, and so that's, that's going to be a, a kind of a, I don't know, there, there's no, there's no experience base to go to, 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 to ask other people, well, when, when you got the end of a pandemic and your wife was in memory care and you hadn't seen her in three months, what did you do? So there's just, you know, that, that's not out there. So